Hi everyone, and welcome to my Let's Play of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. <laughs> so, um, anyways, this is not a blind playthrough. However, I will not be, um, I, I will not be spoiling anything that happens in this game. And in the same manner, I expect that the those of you who have played this game or have seen other Let's Plays of this game, that you will do the same kindness and not spoil the game for anybody who's watching this for the first time. Um, I will be quite deliberate in not spoiling anything of this game. I will not try to uh, allude to anything. My voice acting will do the best to not lead you on to believing someone's bad or good or whatever. I will try to look at the character and give them the voice that either I have heard their voice before sound like or try and make one that looks appropriate for the character without giving away anything. Um, so I hope that you'll enjoy this as much as I enjoyed it when I first played it. I have only played two games of the series, uh, this one and the second one. The reason why I'm actually doing a let's play of this is because I completely plan on doing the uh, Danganronpa V3 game, which is the fourth game in the series. And I might actually do Despair Girls if it, enough of you um, enjoy this series, because uh, I haven't done it. I know its gameplay is a little different. But it is in the same universe, uh, so I, I would I would like to play that. Um, but to get to that, we must play through this game. And I'm going to try and cut my jabber jabbing here and get on with the game. But the last thing I want to say is is that these uploads for Trigger Happy Havoc and the second game that I'm going to be doing are going to be pretty lengthy. Um, and I'm going to cut out a lot of the normal wandering around sort of stuff. Uh, anything that doesn't seem that important to like this story or plot, I will just cut out. Um, I'll include anything that's funny, <laughs> though. All right, let's go. Uh, and I, there is a load game because I was trying to see if my audio levels were good, so I'm just gonna click new English because I think people uh, would enjoy uh, just hearing the English voice acting when it's available. I'll say this right now, I really love the aesthetic of this game. The music, the the art, the... I think they did a really good job with this game, which is why it's memorable for, for people like me. For those of you who have no idea what you've signed up for, <laughs> you're, you're in for a weird game. Uh, this is a visual novel. Um, it's one of one of a few visual novels I highly recommend for other people to uh, <laughs> to um, get into. This one, Phoenix Wright, Zero Escape. Um, I think they're they're all quality visual novels. Uh. Massive high school towers over all other buildings in this bustling urban area. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable, a government-funded school of privilege. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. There are two things you need to attend this school. One, you have to already be attending high school. Two. You have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary student could enroll here. The only way is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school filled with the ultimate students was me. Before we go any farther, I guess I should introduce myself. 
My name's Makoto Naegi. As you can see, I'm nothing but a hopelessly average high school student. Average on the outside, average on the inside. I really don't have much going for me when it comes to grades, special abilities, even personality. I mean, yeah, I have hobbies and stuff I like to do, but it's not like I'm a psychic or a mutant or whatever. Like, if you asked me what my favorite song was, or my favorite movie or TV show, they'd all just be whatever's most popular at that particular moment. Even among the average, I'm completely average. So I can't even say I'm your everyday hero type. That's just who I am. Anyway, I figure it's always good to introduce yourself right off the bat. But, you know, if I have any kind of strong point, so to speak, I'd say I'm a little more gung-ho than other people. I mean, look at me. I'm completely ordinary, but still. Here I am, standing in front of anything but ordinary Hope Speak Academy. I still can't believe I'm standing here. I wonder if someone like me can survive in a place like this. It's got this overwhelming presence, like it's trying to swallow me whole. But it's no wonder I would feel that way. What you have to understand is, well, let me just tell you about the preparation I did last night to get ready for school today. Hope's Peak only invites those students who are truly elite in their field. It's such a popular topic, there are threads online dedicated to talking about the school's attendees. So to prepare, I looked up some of those threads. And all I saw was talk about ultimate students who were way beyond your average high schooler. For example, one incoming student is the ultimate pop sensation. I guess she's a high school girl who's also the lead singer for a pop group famous all over the country. There's also the ultimate baseball star. He was the cleanup hitter for the national high school champs. Pro teams already have their eyes on him. Then there's the ultimate fashionista. She's been on the cover of tons of fashion magazines. She's what every high school girl wants to be. Oh, and they mentioned the ultimate biker gang leader too. The scary thing is, he's the de facto leader of every biker gang in Japan. Gangs everywhere love the guy. On top of that, there's the ultimate martial artist, the ultimate fanfic creator, the ultimate gambler, the ultimate swimming pro, the ultimate programmer, the ultimate clairvoyant, and then some. Reading that made me realize how totally powerless I was. It was the country's finest, top to bottom. I felt like a tame little house cat who'd wandered into a pride of lions. But still, there was something I couldn't stop thinking about. You see, there were a few students who I couldn't find any info on, no matter how much I looked. With all those ultimate students, I'm the only one without any kind of worthwhile talent. But then, what about those other students who didn't seem to pop up anywhere? Could they be just average students like me, without any talent or anything? That thought was kind of encouraging. I mean, I know I don't have much in the way of a personality. But beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. How did such an unbelievably average student like me get picked to come to this ultimate high school? I mean, I guess there is a reason. You just have to take one glance at the acceptance letter they sent me to see why. We recently held a lottery to select one ordinary student to attend our school. As a result, you have been selected and we invite you to join us as the ultimate lucky student. I spelled it out plain as day. I got invited by pure luck. Honestly? I probably would have been better off just declining their offer. But after hearing how graduating was a guarantee for success later in life, I just couldn't say no. But then, actually standing there in front of the school, I started to feel lost, like I didn't belong there. I could feel myself losing my nerve. But still, I can't just stand here in front of the gate forever. Frozen in place, murmuring to myself, I looked down at the acceptance letter clutched in my hand. It said there'd be a meeting for all incoming students in the main hall at 8 a.m. The meeting still isn't for a little while, but I should probably just head in. Yeah. Yeah, let's do this! I gathered up all my determination and tried to act like I'd done this a million times before. And I took my first step towards the main hall. The 
This is where we're supposed to meet, right? I guess I'm the first one here. There's a really elegant clock over in the corner. It says it's 7.10 a.m. The meeting doesn't start until 8 o'clock, so there's still a full 50 minutes left. It makes sense nobody else would be there here yet. I was so wound up. I got here way too early. I have plenty of time before the meeting. Just staying around waiting isn't exactly... I should take a look around the school. Maybe that'll help me calm down a little. I am a student here now, so there shouldn't be any problem with me having a look around, right? It'll help me kill some time, if nothing else. Trying to play it cool, I took my first step into Hope's Peak Academy. It was also my first step toward the starting a new life at a new school. At least, that's what I was hoping for. But the instant I took the first step forward, my view became warped, twisted. It was like some kind of delusion melting away and mixing together into something else. Spinning, mixing, melting away, then spinning again. And the next moment, everything went black. That was how it all began, and how life as I knew it came to an end. At that point, I should have realized... The reason I was brought to Hope's Peak Academy wasn't because I had ultimate good luck. It was so I could experience ultimate despair. Welcome to Despair High School! Welcome to Despair. Prologue. up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body feels heavy. It's pretty normal for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but what was I doing asleep here just now? This isn't a classroom I've ever been in before. What the heck is going on? Welcome to Hope's Peak Academy. Firstly, we'd like to explain the basic controls. You can use the left stick to adjust your aim. If you aim at an object you can interact with, you can press the A button. And presto, you'll investigate that object. Use the directional buttons or the L and R buttons to adjust your viewpoint. Why don't you try looking around the classroom? What the heck? In any normal classroom, that's where a window should be. It looks like some kind of metal plate has been bolted over it. If I were to knock on it... Thong, thong. Yep, definitely metal. Thick too, very solid. Wait, that's not what matters here. More importantly, why are there metal plates over the windows? That's the desk I fell asleep on. I can still see a line of drool I must have left there. Oh, I'll have to clean that up later. Hey, what's that on the desk? An orientation guide? Hey there, new kid! The next semester is about to start. Starting today, this entire this school will be your entire world. It's some kind of cheap-looking pamphlet. There's something handwritten on it. What the hell? Is this someone's idea of a joke? I had already read that out loud. Looks like a camera. Is that a surveillance camera? It's a dangerous world we live in. I guess they have these to keep weirdos from just wandering in. Can I just leave? Ugh, okay. So... Jeez, I can't believe it's already 8 o'clock. It was just after 7 when I got here. Has it really been almost an hour since then? Okay, let's see. So what might have happened is... I got myself so wound up, I passed out in the main hall, and then someone carried me here? If that's true, it must mean this is a classroom inside Hope's Peak. But then, if that's true, that just raises more questions. This is all really strange. I mean, those metal plates covering the windows. It's like this it's a prison or something. None of this makes any sense. I should probably just head back into the main hall. It's already past the meeting time. There might be other students there now. You can leave the classroom by pressing the B button. So let's leave. Whoosh. 
Jeez, this hallway is kind of weird too. This is getting stranger by the second. I honestly have no idea what's going on. Well, for now, I'll just head to the main hall. Alright, so it's just teaching me how to how to move. Um, and here's the map! Okay, so... Uh, that looks like the exit sign. Let's go for here. Because the door is open. By the time I got back to the main hall, everyone else was already there. Whoa, hey! Another new kid? Huh? Then you guys are all... Yeah, we're all new here. Today's supposed to be our first day of class. So, counting him, that makes 15. Seems like a good cutoff point, but I wonder if this is everyone. Standing before me were the ultimate students that had been handpicked by the school. I looked around at everyone who'd gathered there, taking in their faces one at a time. Maybe I was just imagining it, but I swear I could feel a kind of aura coming from each of them. Um, how's it going? My name's Makoto Naegi. Sorry I'm late. A bunch of stuff happened, and then all of a sudden I was just asleep. Huh? Whoa, you too. Hmm. Things just keep getting curiouser and curiouser. Mm hmm. So strange. I declare beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a strange situation indeed. Um, what are you talking about? I honestly have no idea what's going on right now. Just a moment! There's something else we must address! Listen to me! Makoto! Your tardiness is unacceptable! Surely you are aware the meeting was to start at 8 a.m. sharp! To be late on your first day is unspeakable! I must report you and you must accept your due punishment! What? <laughs> What's your problem? It's not like he wanted to be late. He didn't have any control over it. That's right! Everyone, just calm down! Listen! Why don't we all go around and introduce ourselves? Huh? The hell? Now's no time for freaking introductions! <laughs> Maybe, but it may be good to at least find out who we all are before digging into the bigger problems here. I mean, how are we supposed to even talk to each other if we do not know each other's names? Yeah. Th that's a good point. Um... Okay, so let's get introductions out of the way then. We can move on to whatever else. Sound good? I'm still totally lost, but I think it's best to just focus on getting to know each other for now. So, I guess this is as good as a chance as I'm ever gonna get. I already looked everyone up on the Hope's Peak Academy thread online, but I still don't really know what kind of people they actually are. Time to find out. I'll start by talking to those five over there. Alright, so now... It's just telling me to click on them. I'm Kiyotaka Ishimaru. I believe in bold simplicity. Let's work together on our educational crusade. I'm going to give him my most enthusiastic voice as I can do. Because he is pretty extreme <laughs> with his, like, pointing and shouting. So that's Kiyo Kiyotaka. According to what I saw about him on that thread, he went to a famous private school and won top honors every year. He's basically a flawless honor student. He's also known for the work he's done with his community's public morals committee. They say he respects rules above all else, earning him the title of ultimate moral compass. Anyway, you can call me Taka. You said your name was Makoto Nagi, right? <laughs> That's a good name! A strong name! You should thank your parents for giving you such an excellent name! You hear me? And to keep that name from losing its value, you must devote yourself every single day! Got it! Life is worth putting every ounce of effort into it, right? Right! This guy is kind of annoying. Not that you'll remember my name anyway, but... I'm... Toko. Toko Fukawa. And I'm going to do my best to stutter while doing her voice. Yeah, she wrote a novel when 
she was 10 that got everyone talking and launched her literary career. Then two years ago, she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot to... Wait, blah, 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 blah. I read that wrong. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot to the top of every hottest men pool. Spider Age, she's won countless literary prizes and all her books are instant bestsellers. Which is why she's come to be known as the ultimate writing prodigy. What else would you call such a young and talented author? But I figured she'd be a lovey-dovey type. What with her masterpiece being a romance and all. <laughs> What's your problem? What? It's not polite to stare, you know. Stop what? staring at me like I'm some filthy creature! Filthy creature? No, I just thought... <laughs> I know what you just thought! You just thought you'd never seen such an ugly woman! You just thought it was so funny! No, that's not what I was thinking at all. I'm telling you! D don't bother trying to lie to me! I know it's true. Otherwise, you... I, I know you can't stand looking at me. Anyway... Whatever. I don't really care. I'm used to it. Wow, talk about an inferiority complex. I was way off about what a successful author would be like. Right? Hi, I'm Sayaka Marzono. I look forward to getting to know you. Give her kind of an upbeat voice. The way she moves is positively mesmerizing. And that pleasant set scent I can't quite place? Sayaka Maizono. When I saw her name on that thread online, frankly, I was pretty surprised. She's in a pop group famous all across the country. In fact, she's their lead singer. As the ultimate pop sensation, she's in high demand to appear on TV and in magazines everywhere. But actually, that's not the only reason I was so surprised to find out she'd be going to the school. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but... Well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she's really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. I'm not a doll, you know. I'm alive. Huh? Did you hear me? I... I'm psychic. Huh? <laughs> I'm kidding. I just have really good intuition. She's a sharp one. Hey, um... Huh? Hey, by any chance... Now what? Huh? Yeah, it must be. I'm sure of it. Hey, Makoto did... Just hold on! Jeez, you guys, how long do you plan on wasting our value? <laughs> Jeez, you guys, how long do you plan to waste our valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Uh, um, sorry. Just got carried away, I guess. You hear me? Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not bumbling through a bunch of idle chit-chat. Um, you are right. Sorry. Sorry, Makoto. We can talk about this later. It sounded like Sayaka really had something she wanted to say, but it's not like we'll never see her each other again. Just like she said, we can talk later. All right. Yo, the name's Leon Kuwata. What's up? Okay. Try to pull off a dude bro voice. I recognize that name. He played for the National High School Champs at their as their cleanup hitter, the ultimate baseball star. That superb athletic specimen is... You? Seriously? Huh? What's wrong? N nothing, I'm just surprised. I figured with you being the ultimate baseball star and all... Break. What, were you expecting some kid with a shaved head? Shaved head? No, I was just expecting more of a, you know, sporty looking traditional baseball player type. I mean, when I found that article and picture of you online, that's how you looked then. <laughs> what? Oh man, you found that picture of me playing baseball? Seriously? I hate that picture. Oh, crap. That's... This is not cool. This is so not cool. Seriously, I'm like mega embarrassed right now. I didn't have a choice, okay? Shaving your head like that is part of national championship regulations. Jesus, seriously? But now I refuse to cut my hair, and I'm not gonna dye it back to normal either. Hey, listen. Actually, can I be totally honest with you? you? Know. I don't like baseball, like at all. I've never gone to a single practice. 
He's never practiced, and he was still his team's star player. He's some kind of prodigy. Yeah! As soon as I got accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. A dream for the future? <laughs> my only path in life is getting into music. You feel that star quality aura I have, right? You know what I mean. I'm gonna be a singer, so all I need is a songwriter and someone on guitar and we're set. How cool is that? This new version of me that's chasing my after my dream is like super cool to the max. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I never imagined I'd hear something like that from a baseball athlete. And I'm sorry, but I have to give you the uh, nasally voice because I have a limited amount of voices. I am Hifumi Yamada. But if you want to call me by my nickname, the Alpha and the Omega. I don't mind. All right, so I'm gonna do the heroic-sounding voice that I can do whenever it seems appropriate, and the nasally voice. Add other parts because that's the best I can do. <laughs> the ultimate fanfic creator, Ifumi Yamada. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> By the way, how much do you know about the world of 2D art? World of 2D? <laughs> well, in that world, I am well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic creator. Mm -hmm. I once sold 10,000 copies of one of my fan comics at a school festival. The event has been passed into legend. Hmm. Some of them didn't get it, of course, saying I'd tainted the event. How stupid can you be? That's too bad about them. But selling 10,000 copies like that is definitely pretty remarkable. However... The words of such idiots mean nothing to me. I'm like Van Gogh, utterly unappreciated in my time. I'm a soldier serving night and day to destroy all mindless preconceptions about fanfiction. I'm sure if you were able to observe my work, Mr. Naegi, you would comprehend its greatness immediately. Mm -hmm. For my work is filled with deepest meaning. What what kind of meaning? Yes, indeed. It's about embracing our basest urges. I don't think I want to compre comprehend it. Okay, now to talk to those five people over there. Hey, Left. Ya. I'm Aoi Asahina, but my friends just call me Hina. What's up? She's kind of a hard voice to place. Aoi Asahina, she's been breaking records in every competition she's been in since elementary school. She's even been chosen as an upcoming Olympic cadet. She is without a doubt the ultimate swimming pro. The combination of her ability, appearance, and um, proportions have been widely discussed online. Mm. I don't know. She's really hard to place. I think I just... I don't know. I, I feel like Nagy's going to end up sounding like my default voice. My just normal talking voice that I've been doing. So I have to do something different with her. Um... Maybe I can give her a super fast talking voice. So, uh, what was your name again? Sorry, totally forgot. Makoto Naegi. <laughs> oh yeah, I knew it was something like that. No, not something like that. It is that. You got it. Sure, sure, I got it. Here, I'll hammer it into my brain right now. Yeah. Makoto Naegi. Makoto Naegi. She just kept repeating my name and moving her finger across her palm like she was writing something. What are you doing? Huh? You don't know? If you want to remember someone's name, you gotta write it on your hand three times. I've never heard of that before in my life. Mm. Hey, by the way, how do you spell your last name? You spell it exactly like it sounds. Mm. Um. <laughs> well, I have no idea. <laughs> I guess I'll just figure it out later and write it down. Okay. Anyway, glad to meet ya. Sh sure, same here. One thing I learned is she's totally easygoing and bursting with energy. I... I don't know. I... I, I think just talking fast is the best I can do. It, there's a lot of girls. It's so many voices to do. She's just going to end up being a fast voice. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Chihiro Fujisaki. I'm gonna go with a quite shy voice here. <clears throat> Sorry, I get kind of 
bit embarrassed when I introduce myself like this. <laughs> anyway, I hope we can get along. Same here. Nice to meet you. Huh? Huh? Maybe it's just my imagination, but have we met before? Um, I don't think so. I just met for the first time, which is why I said nice to meet you. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, good point. Sorry. You don't have to apologize for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chihiro Fujisaki is known for all the cutting-edge programs she's created. She's the ultimate programmer. She's also got that timid little bunny type thing going, which has endeared her to her legion of fans. Um... So, listen... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Huh? What are you apologizing for um, now? Well, just because you seem upset. You must be mad at me, right? No, not at all. I was just lost in thought about something. Huh? huh? Lost in thought? Yeah, it had nothing to do with me being upset or anything. Thank you. Oh, that's good. I was afraid you maybe didn't like me. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm starting to understand why her fans are so into her. Um, can I ask you your name? My name is Kyoko Kirigiri. The ultimate question mark, question mark, question mark. She's pretty tight-lipped, huh? Oh, but you know... Her name didn't show up anywhere in that Hope's Peak Ac Ac Academy thread. I did see that there were students like me, ones who didn't have any real identity or presence. Could this girl be one of them? Um, so... What are you doing at this school? What? What is that supposed to mean? No, I just meant getting invited here means you're some kind of ultimate something, right? So, what ultimate something are you? That doesn't matter. Why should I tell you? Huh? Well, I guess you don't have to tell me. Mm. No, I don't have to tell you. So I'm not going to. Nothing about her turned up online, so I was thinking maybe she got picked by chance like me, but... Her face is like an iron mask. She doesn't want to tell, any tell me anything. No point in asking. Junko and Ashima. Charmed, I'm sure. And I'm gonna give her my my best Valley Girl accent. Um, for those of you who don't know, I was born in California and lived there for a very long time, so Valley Girl is just like second nature here. <laughs> Anybody would recognize this one. She's got more charm and presence than any high school girl in the country. She's the ultimate fashionista. I've seen her on tons of magazine covers, but... I feel like that doesn't quite match up to reality. What? Huh? Come on. Oh, are you talking about my cover photos and junk? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. Those are totally photoshopped. Photoshopped? Yeah, you know, edited to hell and back with, like, computers and junk? Oh, so they aren't real. What can we do? Uh, come on, don't act so surprised. You're gonna make me all depressed. Totally. It's totally normal these days to Photoshop the crap out of cover photos. If, you, if you're surprised by that, you'll be totally blown away by a certain dangerous little diva of ours. <laughs> They make the eyes and junk super big and tweak the skin so it looks all ceramic and porcelain. Oh, so many dreams are getting crushed today. Name's Mondo Awada. Nice to fucking meet you. I don't know. I can't really pull off a guy's voice too well, so I'm just gonna have to make him sound like a thug because that's the best I can do. Mondo Owada, huh? Which means he's the current leader of the largest biker gang in Japan. He's earned respect, even awe, from every gang in the country. He's the ultimate biker gang leader. Um, nice to meet you, too. Yo. Hell yeah. I'd better be careful around him. One wrong word and I could wake up 
at the bottom of the sea. Those four over there are the only ones left. Alright, starting from left and going right. I am Sakura Ogami. I really wish I could pull off like one of those really like um I, I don't know how to describe but the like the powerful female protagonist voice. I just I cannot do that. My voice is not able to, but <sighs> I'll try. Oh jeez, I almost asked her if she was a guy. The day I say something like that out loud is the day I get turned into a human meatball. Now I remember. She comp competed in a martial arts tournament in America and won despite being a girl. She's the ultimate martial artist. She's fought over 400 matches and never lost a single one. The thread also said a bit more about her. Some call her ogre. Some even think she's the closest known relative to the primates. The famed missing link. Any incoming Hope Speak students who are reading this, let me warn you right now. If you value your life, avoid her at all costs. Standing in front of her now, I don't think they were exaggerating about that. Hey, hey you! Huh? Yes? I snapped to attention without even realizing it. Then she started to poke and prod at my body. Um, what are you? I see. Muscular quality and quantity is right around that of an extremely ordinary high school student. Mm. What a shame. You're not at all fit to act as my training partner. I'm not so sure that's a shame for me. Name's Byakuya Togami. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. That's the most half-assed introduction I've ever heard. But there isn't anything I can do about it. Even among the Ultimate students, this one is special. Yakuya Togami. He's the heir apparent of his family's massive financial conglomerate. He's already started managing businesses, operations, and his own personal assets are well vast. His title of Ultimate Affluent Progeny is completely accurate. He's the definition of accept exceptional. That's everything I learned about him from that Hope's Peak Academy thread online. Come on. We're done with introductions, right? How much longer are you going to stand there? Go away. I'm sick of looking at you. His aura says to me, you and I will never stand on the same level. Like a king in training. I, I, I'm so, I don't know how to do his voice. I'm Yasuhiro Hagakure. Hero for short. Take it easy, yeah? I know I will. <sighs> Yasuhiro Hagakure. Hagakure. I, don't, I, didn't, I wasn't even paying attention how they said his name. <laughs> Known as Supernova in the psychic community. The trend-setting ultimate clairvoyant. Honestly, I don't really get all that fortune-telling stuff. It's pretty much beyond me. Still, I can't help wondering if there's any truth to it. Could it be? Um. I don't know. Uh. Okay. I give up. Huh? What happened? I'm serious. I saw it. I looked at it. Right at it. Seriously. I totally saw it. Saw what? Hmm. A guardian angel with a crazy perm chasing after Bigfoot, running off with a skyfish in its mouth. And that guardian angel is your guardian angel. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But hey, we should grab some brewski some time and get real deep into Lemuria and its civilization. Lemuria and its civilization? I don't even know. What? We're not allowed to drink. We're in high school. You know? Oh, I'm actually 21. I've been held back a few times, see, and, well, it's a long story. A few times? Yeah, I bet it is a long story. <laughs> I do not think we have been introduced. I am Celestia Ludenberg. The Ultimate Gambler. Celestia Luden... huh? <laughs> Ludenberg, it is my name, but if you do not mind... I would prefer if you call me Celeste. Um, you are Japanese, right? Huh? Of course. Why do you ask? If you don't mind, could you tell me your real name? <laughs> <laughs> a 
I don't know what you're talking about. Celestia Ludenberg is my real name. But, as I mentioned, I would much rather you call me Celeste. She's polite, but pretty forceful at the same time. I don't think she wants to say any more about it. I guess the rumors in the thread about were right about her. The self-styled Celestia Ludenberg. She's the ultimate gambler who's never lost a bet. Other than her obvious love of gothic Lolita clothes, everything about her is wrapped in a veil of lies. They say she entered and won an underground gambling tournament, earning the title of Queen of Liars. She totally cleaned out the other players, taking their life savings and laughing as she did it. <laughs> I look forward to getting to know you better. <laughs> that smile is beyond deceptive. I better watch myself around her. And with that, all the introductions are done. Hmm. Even though they're all ultimate, they each have their own individual sort of... Mm, something. Hmm. Okay, time to get down to business. This is no time to stand around making friends like a bunch of dull-eyed baboons. Oh, that's true. I think someone said something about a bigger problem or something? What was that about? Um, listen. Well, you see... Uh, um... Makoto, you said a bunch of stuff happened and then you were just... asleep, right? Well, the same is true for all of us. What? Seriously? I mean, seriously? Just after each of us got to the main hall, we lost our consciousness. And when we woke, came to, we were somewhere here in the school. That's what happened to you, right? But that's just weird. That every one of us would get knocked out like that. Piece of shit! Exactly! That's why we're all freaking out! And that is not the only thing. You saw where all the windows in the classes and hallways were, right? Wait, wait, wait. I said that wrong. And that's not the only thing. You saw where all the windows in the classes and hallways were, right? But instead of normal glass windows, it was a bunch of big metal plates. What's that about? Are you for real? Plus, all my stuff's missing. Even my cell phone. Um... Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen my PDF anywhere either. And then there's the main hall here. The front exit is completely blocked by some giant metal hatch. What does this mean? But there wasn't anything like that when I first got here. What the heck? What the heck? What's it doing there? Mm -hmm. Maybe we got cut up in some kind of, like, you know, crime or something? Is it, like... <laughs> what, like a kidnapping? You think maybe someone grabbed us and hauled us off and we're not actually at school? Hey, come on. Come on, don't think like that. Cheer up. I bet this is all part of the school's orientation procedure. You know? Yeah, I'm sure that's it. So it's just... Um, so I'm just gonna take it easy for a little bit. I see. Oh, so you think they wanted to do something... To surprise us? What the hell? <laughs> well, if that's all it is, it's nap time for me. You know what I mean. I was up way too late last night, so I could use a little shut-eye. I could feel everyone's tension evaporating. But then, it began. 